Hi traders, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm answering another question that was sent to me. And this trader wants to know how to create an indicator that has multiple EMAs across multiple timeframes drawing onto their chart. So today's lesson is going to be quite short and simple. Let's jump into the code. So I just recently got a new computer, which I'm still setting up for my editing and recording software. So I thought I'd just keep today's lesson really simple. In the weeks to come, we'll start uh, going back into more complex subjects like um, automation through Pine Connector and uh, maybe even some real test uh, content like we saw in the last video on the channel. But anyway, for today's lesson, let me get rid of all this code and I'll paste in these lines one by one and break down what we're doing here in order to achieve multiple time frame EMAs on the one indicator. So here are our user inputs. We have an EMA length and we have four time frames: a five minute chart, 30 minute chart, hourly chart and four hour chart. The first thing we need to do before we get any of these higher time frame EMAs is make sure that we're not repainting. So I've covered repainting in the past on the channel. Uh, basically what repainting is, is when your indicator draws information onto the chart that is different on historical data as it is on real time data. It's obviously a big problem, especially when um, using strategies and backtesting scripts. We want our scripts to be performing the same on real time price action as it would on historical price action. And so to eliminate repainting, I'm going to create a custom function here called uh, request security NRP short for non repainting. And this function is going to take three parameters, a time frame, an expression. And today we're using a bar merge parameter as well. I'll explain what this bar merge parameter does when we get to drawing our EMAs. So to define a custom function, we need to give it a name. And then these parentheses uh, contain our parameters for this function. And then we use the equals right arrow sign to um, tell PineScript that the next line of code is going to be what we want this function to do. So we need to indent by one tab. And then uh, for this function, it's just one line of code. We're using the request.security function. And now we're going to pass in our current symbol and then our time frame parameter, this guy here, and then our expression. And this is where we eliminate repainting. The official TradingView documentation, if you scroll down here to this non repainting section here, says we need to pass this expression into the historical operator here. And then we also need to pass the same expression on the outside of the security function. However, instead of having this expression here, we need to flip these numbers here. And now we have a non repainting security function call, but I'm going to add one more parameter here to the security function. And that's going to be our bar merge parameter. This bar merge parameter is going to be what we use to smooth this higher time frame EMA. I'll show you what happens when we don't use the bar merge parameter when we get to that part of the script. The next thing we need to do is get our EMA expression. So that's just going to be EMA value equals uh, TA library dot EMA. We'll use the closing price as our price source and our EMA length will be our input length, which is this guy here. So now we have everything we need in order to get our EMAs on the various uh, time frames that we're using up here. So to do that, we're going to use our security function that doesn't repaint. Of course, you could just copy this line of code and use this four times, but it just makes the script a bit harder to read. That's why I made a custom function to keep things a bit shorter because we know we need this parameter in all of our security function calls because we want to reference the current market on every EMA. And we want this expression on all of our function calls so that we don't repaint. So now I'll create four new variables called EMA underscore time frame and then a number representing each time frame. We'll pass in each time frame input, which is this parameter here. And then the expression, which will be EMA value. And this EMA value will get this value, whatever EMA value is on the current time frame. This security function will retrieve that value from this time frame. So that's how we get multiple time frame indicator values. And of course, this will work on any price value volume indicators. So we could get other indicator values, high time frame RSI values, etc. It doesn't need to just be an EMA. And then finally, we have our bar merge parameter. So 
by default, the security function has bar merge gaps off. So it does not merge any gaps in the data series that the security function retrieves from a higher time frame. I'll explain what that means in a moment once we finish getting all four of our time frames. So two, three, four, two, three, four. We now are retrieving four different time frame EMAs into four different variables. The final thing to do is draw EMAs onto our chart using the plot function. Um, I'll just write out one function here and copy and paste it four times. So for the colors, uh, I've just gone with different shades of red. So the shades get slightly darker as we go up in time frame resolution. So to do that, I use the color.rgb function, which is short for red, green, blue. And then we just pass in 255 would be full red. Zero, zero would be no green, no blue. And zero transparency will give us a bright red color. And then I also made the line with two so that the line is a little bit thicker than the default plot line width. So now we can paste this three more times, change our values like so. And then for the colors, I just reduce the red slightly as we go up in time frame. There we go. That's our script completed. If I save my code now, keep an eye on our EMA lines. Now, this is what it looks like if we have bar merge off, if we have our gaps off. What's happening here is if I zoom in a bit, this first line is the five minute time frame. We're on a one minute chart. And the reason why we have these steps here is because on the one minute chart, we are constantly referencing the previous five minute bars EMA value. So if we go to the five minute chart, this EMA value is smooth because it's actually referencing each bar on our chart. Because we're on the five minute time frame, this is a five minute EMA. If we're on the one minute chart, there's only one five minute bar for every five bars on our one minute chart. And so a new five minute session just started and you can see that our EMA value stepped up a little bit higher. So what this red line value here is, is now the five minute EMA value over the past five bars. And down here, we have the 30 minute time frame, And so this will represent the past 30 bars of price action. So you can see we just started a new 30 minute time frame too. It's currently 1.30 UTC time or 11.30 AM my time. Um, and this one minute bar just began a new 30 minute bar on the higher time frame, And so our EMA value stepped up. Now this can make for an interesting um, sort of support and resistance zone. As you can see up here, you can create trading strategies around these levels. You can see the price being rejected off these uh, two EMAs up here. And you can see that the EMA actually looks like a flat line because we're analyzing what the lower time frame does when it interacts with that higher time frame EMA. In a trending market, EMAs can act as dynamic support and resistance. Um, and so this can make for an interesting way to create trading strategies for trend continuation, uh, where we use the higher time frame as a directional bias and the lower time frame as our signal time frame or trading setup time frame. And so if that's what you're using this higher time frame moving average for, you might want this stepped version as it is, because it gives you a more accurate representation of what that higher time frame EMA value is on these lower time frames. But if you're just using it for a discretionary uh, trend filter, for example, let's say that you're just trading um, pullbacks above all of these moving averages. So you want price to be above all uh, four of these moving averages, and then you're looking for uh, breakout consolidation patterns like this flag pattern here, um, another one's forming here. If that's the kind of thing you're using this um, application of high time frames for, then you might want to leave bar merge on. So if I put bar merge on all of these four indicators and save my script, now our moving average values are smoothed to look like they would if we were on the corresponding time frame. And what it's doing is instead of stepping in between each missing bar, it's just merging these values to get a smoothed version of that price series or that number series. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, this is a very simple lesson, as I said, um, in the weeks to come as I get my computer fully set up, we'll um, dive into more complicated subjects again. 
Uh, but for today, I hope this answers the trader's question. So in summary, we've covered how to uh, disable repainting when using the security function to reference high time frame uh, indicator values. Again, it doesn't need to be the EMA. This could be any one of these um, TA namespace indicators um, and this non-repainting code should work on all markets. Uh, we've covered what the bar merge um, gaps parameter does. And we've also covered a slightly more um, fancy way of color coding your indicators. So with that said, I'll wrap this lesson up here. I hope you found it interesting. As always, best of luck with your trading and I'll speak with you in the next video lesson, hopefully next week. Take care and I'll speak with you then.